Okay guys, so in this video we're going to have a look at my Java roadmap. So let's get into it. So I'm going to keep this as short as I can because basically what I did here is that I responded to a request of an old roadmap that I made, which basically was a JavaScript full stack roadmap where people were asking, okay, how can I learn Frederick? How can I learn all the things that I need in order to be a professional full stack JavaScript developer? And I made one of those and this document is basically derived ex directly from that. A lot of there, there's a lot of overlap between this document and that previous one. But uh, now we're basically on Java instead. So this is going to be a roadmap for Java with React as a front end type of thing or like since we're going to be full stack developers, full stack developers, we're going the full nine like we go, we're going the whole nine yards. We're going to have to have both front end and back end. So let's just dive through here. So these are the topics that I find, like uh, I will argue myself, are among the most relevant if you're going to fulfill both of these roles, both backend and frontend. So they're just ordered by uh, by name here. There's no like there's no importance like or anything like that associated with it. It's basically all of this touches on what I would argue are some, it's not necessarily that every single thing is absolutely as important as everything else, but this, these are all the things that you see here, you will definitely be encounter, like these concepts you will encounter, and this is why it takes quite a long time to become a professional developer, because there's a lot, and this is just a, I mean, this is not even everything, so, anywho. So we have a little analytics section here talking about a few useful tool and some common concept in analytics. Then we have our backend section, just a little bit of description on what that is. Then we have architecture where we talk about different concepts in architecture. And then we have application servers. So when you're working with Java, as like, we're just this guide kind of, this roadmap kind of assumes that you want to be a like an enterprise level developer because most people who do Java is a enterprise developer of some sort. So you're doing some type of web work, and if you want to do that, you need an application server. And these are the most common ones. I strongly recommend a beginner to start with Tomcat because Tomcat is the free version that is going to be probably the easiest and most accessible to you. But the Glass Wildfly, which used to be JBoss, is also popular and Glassfish is fairly relevant still. So apart from that, we have some concepts of client validation, the different approaches, like the most common ones, databases, just listing all of the different databases and some common tools that you will encounter, like uh, Hibernate and JDBC for just doing connections and ORM, ORM, ORM mappings and good stuff like that. And here is the Java section where we talk a little bit about just some general information about Java. And this is not trying to like, because Java is a very big ecosystem. There's tons of tools and we're just focusing on the stuff that is most relevant for enterprise development. But we're also going to touch a little bit on like Android and we're going to mention that the JVM is an entity in of itself. So there is a little section here where you can go and read about all the nice little languages that um, can run on the JVM if you wanted to try something different out. And then we're going to touch, like there, we have a section here about common tools where, okay, Java Enterprise Edition, important thing to know if you want to be a professional because a lot of the older companies that use Java are still using Java EE. And then you have some things, things like Spring and Spring Boot, which are a little bit more modern. Like it's basically these, these, these things, are, you can think of them, it's not the whole truth for Java EE or Spring or Spring Boot for that matter, but you can think of them as frameworks for you to do web development work. It doesn't just have to do with web development, but that's the focus. You can think of it that way. I think that's fair. And then we have a small section here on message queues and editors, things like that. I'm not covering every editor here. I'm just taking like these are among the more, more like the more common ones you see people who do Java development use. IntelliJ probably being one of the more modern and stronger choices here. Eclipse is a little bit old school, but still you know has some merit. And Android Studio is a very nice go-to if you're going to do Android development of some sort. And then we have our front-end section here, just a bit to talk about like the different parts of frontend and all of these things here that have like basically like bundling, what bundling is, things like webpack and different things to know about that, browsers, all the like some general information about this. And then we have CSS of course, which everybody absolutely loves to hate and all the things that are useful to know about CSS or well, most of the stuff anyway. 
and some basics about HTML and links to references and then of course JavaScript because hey the world wouldn't be complete without JavaScript and resources just some stuff that because I can put this on the front end because quite a lot the, these are things that are very useful if you want to go into front end I just per my recommendation and here is a section about react and some of the most relevant tools to know about when you're doing react development and then we have a small sec like a section here where it's just some general information about jobs getting a job fitting in at work doing these sorts of things these sort of soft skills that we don't really talk about in education because hey education is about academics right and that's the thing that gets you a job and then we have infrastructure things that are like very common useful things to know about cloud providers docker things like this and we have environmental provisioning tools things of this nature and yeah you can just kind of go through and read that as well it's just fairly nice linting you don't really need linter so much when it, if you're you're using something like intellij or full-fledged id you already have that built in this is more for like front-end purposes where style lint and eslint are very common things to know about if you want to do front-end work right then we have logging, like just the basics about what logs are, logging is, log levels, and log for yay. I mean, there are different, like there's many different logging frameworks out there, but log for yay is a very common one that you use in association with Java. And then we have networks and like a bunch of different links to different things that are related to networking and things that you pay pretty much need to know about networks when you're working with uh, application development. Here are some package managers and well, technically not they, they are not strictly package manager but they are the thing that you're going to use in order to draw in packages and dependencies. Maven and Grade, like these two are for JavaScript and Maven and Gradle are the things that you would look for in, uh, in the Java world. You, I could throw in ant there as well, like under package management. Like technically, ant could be here as well, but that's even like you can think of it as this way. Ant is the old, like the oldest kid on the block, and then you have Maven, and then the most modern thing we have today is Gradle when it comes to this sort of thing. But I think these two should ha keep you fairly. I haven't seen all that many people still use ant uh, in Java. They, they, there, it does happen, but these are more common. And here we have project workflows and basically a little bit on Scrum and Kanban and continuous integration, all of these things that we use in daily professional level work. And then we have task runners, which is basically just, well, the gulping run for JavaScript, Maven and Gradle for Java. And testing, a big list here on different types of testing and different approaches and some small tips about libraries that are useful to know about. And Cypress as a tool for doing end-to-end -end testing or things like this. I also added a section here for TypeScript, mostly because TypeScript has become a, it become, it's a, it, it's not necessarily the most important thing in the world, but it is becoming increasingly important for you to know about TypeScript if you want to do front-end work. It's set, you're definitely going to encounter it at some point within your career. And then finally, version control, and we're going to talk just, just here briefly about the different, the most common things that you will see in version control. And Git is by far the most common, but Mercurial and Subversion are still out there. And some practices about like how you can work with branches and repositories if you want to store your code. So that's pretty much it. And then we have a little FAQ section here. And yeah, that is pretty much it. So this is, you know, if you see something that doesn't sit well with you or something like that, you can always like, you know, just create a pull request or put a comment or something like that. But this should pretty much cover all the things that you need to know in order to, I mean, if you, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you to master all of these tools because although I am, I have a pretty good understanding of all of this and a working understanding of pretty much all of it, but I'm, I'm by not, no, no means a master of all of this, then I will, I will claim to you that you have every single skill that you could you could pretty much want in order to work as a professional it's i mean this is not everything that the programmer needs to know but this is a 
to churn through all of this and learn it, it's going to take you a while. But I can promise you that this is a very good representation in general over the, the landscape of uh, how working as a full stack Java developer actually works and the sort of skills that may be entailed into this. You don't have to be a master of everything, but this list should cover pretty much all the things that you would need in order to be certain that you have the most up-to-date skills. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you find this useful. Have a great day.